So at the conclusion of this course, students will be able to identify what Tails OS is. We're going to identify at least one reason you may wish to use Tails OS. We're going to explain how Tails OS works. We're going to describe at least one method to install Tails OS. And we're going to describe a security event in relation to Tails OS. So what's Tails? So this is Tails. And for anybody who doesn't know what Tails is, it's an operating system. And it, uh, it advertises itself as a live operating system. And essentially what that means is, is that you can run this operating system without installing it on actual computing hardware. You keep it on a USB drive and you boot from USB and you use the operating system directly from USB. Anybody in this room has probably installed Ubuntu or Arch or any of these other operating systems and generally you boot from, nowadays, you boot from a USB drive and upon booting from a USB drive it often will drop you into what's a trial of the OS. You see this with Manjaro and you can use that operating system live without doing any kind of changes to the actual hard drive within the computer. Okay. Now, the idea behind Tails is that using and installing this allows you access, take a step back, easy access to tools that provide you the ability to anonymously surf the internet, to circumvent censorship, to leave no trace, or if you feel the need to, to use cryptographic tools. Now, the Tails project is not really different from any of the other operating systems that you'll find except for the one condition that it comes pre-installed with Tor. Tor is designed to start as soon as the operating system starts up and everything is supposed to funnel directly through it. You, it comes with the Tor browser, everything's set up to use Tor. It's supposed to be completely set up for you. Now, you don't need this, okay? Not a single person in this room. I would be shocked if any of you told me that you could not very easily take any copy of Linux and build your own live suite. I'm sure some of us probably have already done this within the room. Tails is nothing special beyond a specific configuration provided to you for easy installation to a USB drive. That's it. But it's nothing that you can't do. Now, some of you have probably already heard this, but do you all remember back in the 90s when gun control was big under Bill Clinton and they had a lot of news articles that were being run about Saturday night specials? Do you remember that? It was a pistol. It was a gun, and it was a Saturday night special, and what did it do? It killed everybody. It was the scariest shit in the world. What did, the cider, what did it look like? Can anybody tell me what a Saturday night special looked like? No, because they were all different. They would show you a Mac-10, and then they would show you a revolver, and then they would have a Colt Python, and then they would go back to a 1911. They were all Saturday night specials. It was just a term used to scare people, okay? They needed a term that they could work with, and that was the term. And I remember as a child, I told my mom, we live, in a really enough, we live in a really rough neighborhood. You should buy a pistol. And she said, well, what gun should I buy? And I said, you should ask for a Saturday Night Special because that's the best gun. I saw it on TV. It's amazing. It scares everybody. Literally, it blows through armor, tanks, everything. It'll take everything down. We get one of those, we're set for life. But that wasn't the case. Okay, now Tails, like Kali Linux, is kind of the Saturday night special of operating systems. Once you get this, if you surf to the Tails webpage from your home, if you have read any of the leaks that came out from WikiLeaks, it said that if you go to Tor or Tails or even Linux Journal, you end up on the NSA watch list. Have you all seen that? So for any of these tools, they're the Saturday night special. They ins they're, they're, oh, they're scary. They can do anything. If you have tails on a USB drive, you're Mr. Hacker Man. Like, that's you. So what I usually tell my students is don't have the Saturday night special of operating systems. Uh, oftentimes, they'll come into my class and they'll put Cali on their box and they'll have the great big, you know, fuck the police right on the back of their laptop, and I tell them, do you want to stand in front of a judge
who doesn't know the difference between a Commodore 64 and an Etch-a-Sketch <laughs> and have to explain to him why you have all that stuff on the back of your laptop and on the front you have a great big old dragon and it says Cali and the more quiet you are the more dangerous you are and all this stuff do you want to have to explain to that old person why you're not guilty but you have this stuff on your system don't have the Saturday night special of operating systems or laptops or so on and so forth because if you end up in front of somebody and need to be able to explain this stuff you don't want to make yourself a huge target okay make sense so tails like Cali is kind of the Saturday night special of operating systems you go to the tails webpage from your home and guess what you're on the watch list but it's just a bootable OS that is installed to USB or CD-ROM that's it now Obviously, everybody here probably has a pretty good idea that uh, if I wanted to defeat Tails in probably the easiest way, what do you all think would be the easiest way to do it? Compromise what? The hardware? The hardware. So if you, if you can compromise the hardware, you're done anyways. You're cooked. Uh, I have in here, just further down, uh, well, I can't see the link because this stuff is like that, but uh, here, let's just do this. Hardware keylogger. And you can buy hardware keyloggers on Amazon. There's tons of web pages that sell, sell them. You can go all over the place. This company right here, these key loggers are available through Amazon, and they're on Amazon Prime, and you can have one in less than 24 hours. And they work uh, wirelessly. So if you're using physical hardware, and you want to compromise that hardware, you can do it for about 30 bucks, give or take, about $30. And it's real easy if you have a little bit more money to set up one of these key loggers that are Bluetooth driven and then set it with what a Raspberry Pi with a little bit bigger hard drive on it and just have it automatically pull that data live and so with a system like that and a USB port on the system that you can access for the keyboard and a USB port to power your Raspberry Pi or better yet a battery one of those little batteries you can set up a really, really nice key logging system. I'm sure everybody here has got the wheels turning. Everybody here has got it figured out already. But you can set up a system like that for less than 100 bucks, guaranteed. So for less than 100 bucks, you can compromise a system as long as you can gain access to that system. And you can persistently compromise that system. Everybody here uh, got a desktop, desktop computer, sure and you check the back where you plug in your keyboard every single day. Just pull that huge computer right out and look and see exactly where that keyboard's plugged in and make sure that there's nothing on there. No. Exactly. No, nobody does that. Nobody does I'm the that. only one, so who else is going to come to the house? Right. Well, uh, for those of you who travel, China has a really, really bad habit of if you leave your computer in your hotel room, when you visit China, by the time you come back, they have disassembled your laptop and uh, soldered key loggers directly to the motherboard. They are very good at it and very fast. And there are examples, countless examples, of people traveling for business overseas, leaving their computer alone for what they felt was a very, very short amount of time, and then finding out very quickly that their hardware had been compromised by somebody who moved at very, very high speeds to add things directly to the system and of course we've all heard about people coming in from overseas to go to DEF CON and then they get their laptop taken away for 45 minutes and then when the laptop comes back they look and all the screws have been undone and people have gained access to the system and added key loggers and so on and so forth we have countless numbers of people who report that they come for things like DEF CON and the next thing you know their systems compromised so all of these tools easy to get a hold of easy to use and they very, very easily and handedly defeat the idea behind Tails.
because once you have access to the physical hardware, you're done. Uh, let's talk about Dread Pirate Roberts for a second because if they can figure out where you're located. And Dread Pirate Roberts is who? Silk Road. Silk Road, thank you. So Silk Road guy, Dread Pirate Roberts, takes his laptop. Pretty good on operational security, sort of, uh, for a guy who probably learned this stuff as he went. He was okay. He would take his system, only connect to Tor. He would always take it to a library. Well, eventually they tracked him down, figured out what library he was at. Uh, I think it was a coffee shop or something. And he's sitting there and he's using his computer and a couple comes in, they're both agents. They stage a fight. They pretend to be arguing with each other. And then uh, one of them bumps over the table, grabs his laptop and takes off running, hauls ass out of the place while slamming on the down arrow to make sure that the computer doesn't lock. And that's how they gained access to his computer so that the computer didn't lock and they didn't end up with a system that's been encrypted and they can't gain access to it. They made sure that he was using it before they started their little tiff and then they stole the computer. Okay? So even running something like this, depending on how important you are or what it is that they need from you, this, none of this stuff is 100%. Okay? Not, not any of it. But that real claim to fame for Tails, the real most important piece of it is the deep integration with Tor. Now, it used to be Tor and I2P, but they couldn't find anybody to take care of the I2P part, and people kept uh, breaking the I2P part. They were able to, to exploit it. So eventually, they just pulled I2P out entirely. I2P's gone. They're just not going to use it. They can't find anybody to support it. Nobody's doing that. So they just switched to 100% Tor right now. So that means for anybody in here who's interested, if you want to be a maintainer, fork it and go in there and add back I2P and then promise to continue maintaining it and end up on the NSA watch list for real reels, not even for play plays. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, again, going back to the whole Saturday night special thing, you can build a live operating system. It takes nothing. Everybody in here, we can all do it. There's an, any number of Linux distributions. You can go on to Google right now and type in Arch Linux Live Distribution Build Help, and you will be able to find detailed instructions on how to do this, and you can set up your own copy of Tails pretty easily. Um, I feel like it makes sense on something like this to roll your own, because the more information that you have and the better understanding of how a system like this operates, the more likely it is that you will find issues. Now, for those people who go, well, it's already pre-built, so why would you reinvent the wheel? That's not the Unix method, right? Raise, a, raise your hand, please, if you have read every line in the Linux kernel. Just every line. And I know some of these faces in here. I've asked this question before, and I see that you all haven't read it yet. No? So if you have not read every line of the Linux kernel, then how do you know the Linux kernel is secure? I'm working on it. Right? OK, good. I'm glad that you're working on it. Fantastic. You all have to hurry, though, because they change it pretty regularly. Um, if you don't have a grasp of what it is that you're working on, don't trust it. That's the, that's the easiest way to put it. There's videos online of on YouTube of Linus Torvalds getting up and they ask him, has anybody ever approached you to add a backdoor to Linux? Do you think there's a backdoor in Linux? And he goes, no, and laughs about it. I've got videos of it on my webpage. You can go to YouTube. You can look it up. So if you don't think that this stuff has issues within it somewhere, it probably does. I'm just, I'll just tell you right now. Considering the fact that certain individuals have gotten up and talked about this stuff, it's a good idea to keep it in mind. And if you don't feel confident enough to create your own live Linux distribution, you probably shouldn't be using Tails yet. Learn how to make your own live distribution, and then you can switch over to Tails. And I also recommend sitting there and using tools like uh, Wireshark on your network while you do it, so you can pay attention to what's going on, see, learn how it works, what it's doing, who it's communicating with, how. Pay attention to that data. So how do we install this thing? Well, you got two options. And I'm going to be a total loser here. 
and I am going to recommend Etcher. I think Etcher's fine. I don't care. There's going to be people who tell you don't, and Etcher doesn't like my browser, and that's fine. But Etcher is a really, really easy, quick way to take an ISL, pick an SD card or a USB drive, and just burn to it. Works fine. Some people don't like it. Whatever. I don't have time. Uh, get Etcher, download Tails, burn the OS to, OS to a USB drive or a SD card. Uh, the smaller the SD card, the better. Because you can take a really, really small SD card and then you put it in your shoe. And then you don't have to worry about losing it. And I'm not kidding. Because the most important part of using something like this is what? Physical security. Right? We just talked about that. So the physical security part, you can go on Amazon and you can buy yourself a pair of socks that on the inside, people use it for dope. They, they have little zippers on the inside. But you can use it for a USB card. And then you wash it and then you get to roll your own OS again. <laughs> so it's called practice. All right. Uh, the other thing that you can do is create a virtual machine with no hard drive and then boot from the ISO into a virtual machine if you want to practice with it. It's a good way to learn. And it'll come up and it'll give you a huge warning. And it'll say, this is super dangerous, you're crazy, what are you doing, so on and so forth. And who cares, because you're learning. If you're using this for educational purposes, it's a really easy way to do it. Boot it up into a virtual machine and just play with it. Yes? Or learn to use DD, which is? Or DD, sure. Instead of Etcher, I guess. Yeah. The only problem is, is when I use DD, for whatever reason, even when I put in everything right and I check it twice, like my name is Santa, uh, the thing still will often end up with it not working for me. But I have used Etcher multiple times and not had a problem. So again, I'm not using this for anything uh, dastardly. And I highly doubt anybody in here is going to use it for anything dastardly. Uh, anybody who is going to do this stuff for dastardly purposes and you're going to twirl your mustache and so on and so forth, you're probably not going to be here in this class. Okay? It's just, if you want to use the real no. Unix command to sure. move media around, it's DD. Yeah. yeah, and you can use DD for a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, our guys in forensics use DD all the time. So I'm not, I'm not knocking DD. You can use DD all day. But Tails, relatively simple, requires little or no setup. Turn it on, it boots, and within a little bit, you can be surfing the web using Tor. Um, all you have to do is connect to a wireless network or hardwired network. And that purpose of using something like to Tails is to give you a basic and relatively safe method of working with Tor with a reasonable amount of security. Reasonable amount. Tails doesn't make you into a super hacker. Tails doesn't protect you. It doesn't do all the things that some people may think that it does. It just it doesn't. Tails is good for you getting access to Tor and doing stuff with a reasonable amount of security. Okay. One of the big issues that I have with the Tor browser, some of you have already taken this before when, I, when I've said this, what's my big issue with the Tor browser? JavaScript. Thank you, JavaScript. Tor allows you to move JavaScript. Freenet does not allow you to move JavaScript. What, what provides 17,000 and some change CVE vulnerabilities for Firefox right now? JavaScript. Elinks for vulnerabilities. Elinks is my favorite browser. So, and guess what? No JavaScript. Well, you can add JavaScript into Elinks, don't do it. So, why do you want to use Tails? Well, you want to enhance security and privacy while reducing the chance that forensic analysis will be able to recover your information from the system you were using. If you use Tails to save stuff locally to either a hard drive or an external hard drive or you write to your live USB, that is dumb. That is not what it is for. You don't use it for saving things. Tails is for communication, for sending information out, for sitting down and very quickly pinning up a report about something that's going on and then sending that information out. It is not there for you to save data or keep pictures or do any of that stuff because it defeats the entire purpose of having a tool designed not to write to anything. 
It's for you to have a system that is not forensically sound, and as soon as you make it forensically sound, so that you can save stuff, it defeats the purpose. It, it, it's done. There's no reason to even use it anymore. So how do you secure your thumb drive? Oh, I don't know. Don't lose it and don't allow others to grab it. Probably a good idea. Don't give it to people. Don't hand it off. Don't flash it around. Don't let people see it. I think Tails even has a hilarious mode right now that you can switch to make it look like Windows XP. So that when somebody looks over your shoulder, it looks like you're on a Windows XP computer, because that's not suspicious at all, especially nowadays. So is Tails foolproof? No. I've said it before. I've said it again. I'll say it over and over and over again. Tails is not foolproof. It's a simplified method of deploying Tor on a computer while greatly reducing your local footprint. That's it. That's all. It just reduces that, fo that footprint. And if you use it to write, it defeats the purpose of using that system. Like you're done. So your online activity is also going to be relatively obvious and your use of tails will raise red flags. You end up on the list. The, the, the magical list that we all don't know that we're on, if you're not on it, when you're done with this, you're on that list. They've said it in all of the documentation that's been leaked. It's all over the internet. Linux journal, tails, Tor. All of those things, red flags. And guess what? Tails, huge red flag. You can see that on your network. When somebody starts using tails on the network, they know. Your ISP knows. Wherever you're connecting, they know. And there's date timestamps. And that means that when you go to the coffee shop and you sit down with your hoodie, with the, fuck the police on the back of your computer, and you stick in your tails, and you start using it, and they want to know who was using tails at that time, they go and they say, hey, can I get video of all the entire area here? I want to see everybody at this time. And they track you until you go and you sit down and you buy your stupid caramel latte. And then they have all of that, and they can use it. It's metadata. It's essentially taking all of the surrounding data to fill in the holes that are missing. Now, is this effective? Hell yeah. Let's talk about young man. He's in college. That young man decides, you know what? I am not ready. Just I am not physically or mentally prepared to take my final. So what does he do? He fires up the old Tor machine, and he jumps on there, and he calls in a bomb threat. And the way he does it is using Tor, he goes to a text-to-speech helper place for the, the deaf. So he goes in, and he says, there's a bomb in the building, so on and so forth, blah, blah, blah. And if you don't stop finals, blow the whole place up. Sky high. Super bomb. It's the worst. And then immediately logs off a of tails. Or tour. Sorry. Immediately logs off a of tour. And within a few minutes, the police come to his door. Boom, boom, boom. Hey, did you call in a bomb threat? Yeah. Why? Well, I didn't want to take my finals. Okay, come with us. And they knew it was him, even though he had used Tor. And the reason why was because, guess what? He was on the school network. During finals week, when nearly the entire school was empty, and guess what room was using Tor? His room. His room was the only room using Tor. So even though they didn't know who the person was that connected to that service, when they contacted that service and the service said, well, the IP address was a, was a Tor IP. Here it is. Here's the IP address that connected to us. It's a Tor IP address. And they said, OK. And then they look. And at the a few minutes before that call was made, somebody connected to the Tor network. And then the call was made. And then almost immediately, that Tor network connection, gone. That's all metadata. That, what does that tell you? Somebody was connected to Tor at the exact same time that this crime was being committed. And even though we don't know for a fact that it's him, now we know a location. We have somebody who's suspicious. So we have a suspect, right? And we have enough information here for us to go over there and knock on the door and say, hey, homeboy, what were you doing on your computer at that time? And of course he caved. A bunch of police officers show up at your door. And they said, what are you doing? And he goes, dumb stuff. OK, well, come with us. You're done. So using a tool like Tor does not function if you do not know how to use it. And most people do not know how to use it. They just don't. They're never going to use it correctly. And it's never going to provide the kind of protection or the, the, 
ability to anonymize your traffic like you might think that it would. Because for the vast majority of people, they're going to jump on tour when they do bad things, and when they're done doing bad things, they jump off tour. And so if the only time that you're doing bad things is when you're on tour, it's pretty easy to figure out what's going on. It's all metadata. So don't expect Tails to provide any additional protection over a local copy of Tor unless you're ready to change your method of surfing the internet drastically. You cannot mix identities. If you jump on Tor and you go log into Facebook, we know who you are because we have your Facebook login. It does not function that way. Your entire method of using the internet has to be completely different than what it would normally be for any of this to have any effectiveness beyond defending yourself from a country that does not have access to that data. Yes, if you're out there in Syria in the middle of this civil war and you're using Tor, well guess what? Potentially somebody's going to find out that you're on Tor. But in general, they're not going to be able to go and access the data in Twitter to find out that you were using Twitter. But here within the United States, yes, we could figure it out. And we could get enough information, metadata, to be able to put together, OK, an individual keeps logging into Twitter at this time, from this time to this time, using Tor from this time to this time, so we can make an expectation that they're connected. And that goes all the way back to nation state actors having the capability to monitor enough of the internet at one time to be able to put all of that data together. Which if you go to the actual Tails webpage, they do talk about that as a potential threat vector that can affect Tails users. So a group as large as the United States who has the ability to exert influence on the main eight service providers who provide the actual backbone for the entire world, there's only eight companies, and I believe there's only two in the United States. So if you're within the United States and you're using those tools, there's only two companies that you have to go into and go, give us that data to. That makes it much simpler, which is how that works. So how do we enhance security with Tails? Do not mix identities with Tails. You can't. Once you start mixing identities and changing how things operate, if you're not very, very careful, you're just going to reveal who you are anyways. Do not use Tails or Tor from your home network. Once you start connecting to Tor and Tails from your home network, then they know you're using it. And your home network is part of that dragnet. It's that easy. Do not use compromised hardware. Probably should not have to say that, but if you don't physically have the ability to review your hardware, then you cannot guarantee that that hardware is safe. And if you leave that hardware unsafe, you can almost guarantee that that hardware will become unsafe. Do not expect privacy from nation state level attacks. It's just not there. There's only a handful of companies that provide the entire internet for the whole world, and it's very, very easy to triangulate where these systems are. Who was running the world's largest child pornography webpage just last year? That's correct. Australia. Well, Australia. Australia. It was Australia, but that's general area. Who was running the second biggest child pornography ring in the entire world back then? And they were the first up until Australia decided to just poof, kick them right off the edge. Who was the first? FBI. So if you want to know what groups were moving child porn, both of these nation level attackers located these companies, took them over, and the thing that chaps my ass is once those groups took over, the kitty porner said that they knew something was wrong because the servers were so responsive. They became better. They were better run. Things became more responsive. It was easier to get their fix. And that's when they said, oh shit, something's wrong. And a whole bunch of them fell off because the, the, the clowns that were running it beforehand, they knew that they were not that good. They weren't good enough to do that. But the FBI and, and Australia decided to step the game up and make the web pages better. Now we can get into a real big thing here where I get real pissed off about what's called revictimization. And revictimization, if you're not familiar with the law enforcement term, is where you have a person and they've been victimized, and then because you have taken pictures or images or so on and so forth, video, uh, then every time you serve that up to somebody, you are removing that person's capability or ability 
to have a decision in what's going on in their life. They're being re-victimized over and over and over again. So all that re-victimization that was going on, what did that earn us? Not a whole hell of a lot because they didn't want to talk at the FBI about what tools and techniques they used. So when these guys went to court after they got arrested and the FBI said, okay, you're under arrest. And those guys said, okay, tell us how you broke Tor. And the FBI said, well, hell no, we're not going to say that. And so the judge just started throwing the cases out. So they re-victimized children for several months and then threw the cases out because they didn't want to tell anybody how they busted them. And at that point, that's when I get pissed off because that's not how you operate, or at least I don't think you should. Personal opinion, and some people are going to disagree with me, and I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, at least we shut it down. But you could have shut it down a lot earlier than that, than allowing these people to continue doing what they were doing, and then for no tangible benefit other than to add them to a list. That for many of these people, because they're overseas, that list is not going to matter anyways. Is software perfect? Y'all? No? Yes? Maybe? No? No. Software is not perfect. Uh, it just isn't. We can see it. We see it all over the place. Software is not perfect. So keep that in mind. No matter what these tools are that you're using, there's always a way. It's measure, countermeasure, right? We all learn that. For every single measure that you have, there was always going to be a countermeasure. And it's always going to continue. There is no difference between that. And then if you decide, well, you know what? I'm just going to use a VPN. That's fine. Remember, your VPN is going to be connected to you by your payment method. It's going to be connected by how you purchase these things. Uh, people have told me, well, I'll just go out and I'll make it super complicated. What I'll do is I'll find a homeless guy, and then I'm going to give him a uh, card from a, a Visa card that I bought at a Walmart. Well, yeah, but you, now your face is, well, then I'll have the homeless guy go out and he'll buy the card <laughs> with the cash, and then he's going to go buy my VPN. And then what happens when they realize that, hey, we kind of know all the homeless people, and they go pick that guy up, and he goes, oh, yeah, that guy right over there, he asked me to do it, and so on and so forth. People try to make it too complicated. Um, and then in addition to that, most of these, most of the, the places that you're going to get a VPN from, everybody knows that when it says we don't keep records, they don't keep records until the FBI shows up, and then you better believe they keep records. Uh, Hide My Ass. Everybody knows Hide, Hide My Ass VPN? And who were they hooked up with? Molsec? Anonymous? Yeah? Okay. So Anonymous decided they were going to use Hide My Ass VPN, and they start using it, and they're doing all their stuff, and then the FBI said, hey, we need the records for the Hide My Ass VPN. And Hide My Ass said, we don't keep records. You can see it right on our webpage. It says no records. And the FBI said, so you keep records, and we know you do, and you're going to give them to us or else. And you know what they did? They said, oh, sh those records. And they went and got the records, and they handed them over. So when they tell you we don't keep records, that's, it's not true. There's not a single VPN that doesn't keep records. It's just they're not out there. Because with enough pressure, they'll, they'll fork up the records. So how about some answers? Well, Tails OS is an amnesic operating system used to provide privacy and anonymity. Neat. Tails provides an easy-to-use copy of Tor that includes many tools <coughs> excuse me, that may be useful to someone wishing to surf the internet using Tor. It's not going to make you a super secret spy. It's not going to hide you. It's not anything. It's just it's a nice tool that you can use if you want to connect to Tor. And Tor doesn't hide you either. Tails OS is an operating system that is programmed with a number of tools that allow users to connect to the internet over Tor without saving any information to a hard drive for later retrieval. Okay. Now, mind you, some of these will look at the RAM and they will write to RAM and sometimes they will use swap and that's again why I told you about they'll try to grab the laptop. They'll have the fight in front of you. So remember, <coughs> what I usually tell people is, if the big couple in front of you starts having a tiff, or the guy from China in the giant coat with the hat tucked down starts walking slowly towards you, or the real pretty girl in the bikini walks up, 
and starts reaching towards your laptop, it's not because she thinks your stickers are cool, okay? Because they need access to that system and they need it live so that they can gather information from it. Because once you turn it all off and it's been sitting there long enough, then everything's lost. Now, Tails OS is normally installed on a USB thumb drive as a live operating system, and that's their recommended method. Easy as that. And Tails OS has and does sometimes suffer from zero-day exploits, and this has caused much debate on when and how these issues should, re should be reported. They talk about it all the time. <coughs> Somebody will get up and they'll say, I broke Tor, and that becomes their business's claim to fame, is that they broke Tor, and it's a total lie. They found a JavaScript exploit that they can run in the Tor browser, which is based on Firefox, and that's what they did. But just the sheer fact that you can use that tool in combination with JavaScript, and that they often will tell you that you should be using JavaScript with Tor, that should tell you something. That should be a massive red flag for anybody in here who's thinking about this stuff. So when Freenet says, the only thing we're going to serve you is HTML and some CSS, and you cannot have JavaScript over our tool, that tells me something on how they approach security as opposed to the Tor browser with their system saying, you should use JavaScript because it makes you look like everybody else. Hmm. Now, Tails is a great tool for individuals who do not have the technical skills necessary or the time to set up and deploy Tor securely if you want to experiment with Tor. Okay? Now, you can use Tails in combination with good operational security and smart behavior to provide maximum levels of anonymity online. But, again, you have to change your method of using the computer. You have to change your behavior. You have to change what accounts you use. You are changing your identity every time you use this system, and you have to keep them separate, or it does not work. Final recommendations. Use Linux. Use Freenet. And I feel bad, because I work at a police department, and we're in a police department, and I keep saying use Freenet. And I'm sure people are going, ha, you're not going to get me. But I really do think that Freenet is probably the best choice. I use Freenet in combination with uh, eLinks, so I never load images, I never load anything, uh, and I love it. I think it's fantastic. It's fast. It works great for me. I get on there and I read all kinds of stories. There's tons and tons of people who just do microblogging on Freenet, and they all have the most insane, craziest stories. It's a great tool. Love Freenet. Contribute to some sort of privacy-enhancing project. I don't care which one you pick, but pick one and start contributing. Do something. I recommend Freenet, though. They need people. They need developers. So if you're a software developer or a coder or you can work on Python because their web page is written in Python, Python 2, uh, if you can do any of that stuff, go work with them. Find a way to contribute. Give back to the community if you can. And believe me, you can. No matter what your skill set is or how high or low you are on the, the totem pole, I tell my students, some of them have never coded before in their life, and I tell them, find some of these projects that are being worked on by Europeans and go in there and fix their English. That's all you have to do. Fork it, look at their documentation, and change it so it's not in bad English. Make it easy to read and then submit it. And that is a basic, simple method to make fixes and to contribute without you having to do any kind of coding or anything like that. As long as you can use GitHub or GitLab, you're good to go. You're golden. You can start contributing today. Not a single person in this room cannot do that. Uh, develop relationships and build your own darknet. You need to network. Nothing works without a network. That's how it functions. If you're not networking and you're not building relationships and figuring out how these things work and working with these groups, you're failing at security. You are. Because though that's where the changes are being made. They're not all here. They're out. So you need to network. And again, final, final piece, if nothing else, if you don't listen to any of this other stuff, contribute to an open source project. Find something to contribute. Give back. Questions? Maybe? Yes? Go ahead. Um, so you're recommending Linux and your thing with, well, did you read the kernel? No. 
but I, so, okay. So maybe the question is, why do I like Linux over Windows or over Mac, right? Because that's kind of our three main choices until we get into something like what? FreeBSD or uh, potentially Temple OS. Like that's our, that's our picks, right? Like that's what we can choose from. What's that? OpenBSD. Or, or OpenBSD. So you've got some BSDs, you've got Linux, you've got the, the guy here in Arizona who made Temple OS and that's about it. Like that's, that's, that's where we can go. With that, oh, there's Minix. Uh, Minix being used for uh, operating at hardware level with many of the tool. Ch Let me take a step back here. Minix is used to develop vulnerabilities for hardware produced by Intel. There we go. Okay, that's what we use Minix for. So, why do I use Linux? A, because I like it. B, because I'm not really doing anything, and, it, and I hate this fallacy. I hate the idea of, well, if you're not doing anything, what do you care if they're going through all your stuff? You know what? Those are my nudie pictures of myself, and I can keep those nudie pictures myself, and nobody else gets to look at them, right? Like, that's the, that's the, the thing. It's, I should be allowed to be private with my stuff for as long as I want. Now, is Linux private? Probably not. Are there back doors in it? Linus Torvald said probably. So... All these different groups know that every single one of them is broken, but I know for a fact that Windows has a history of abusing its users. I don't like Windows. I don't like the way that Microsoft does business. I disagree with their uh, decision-making process of uh, grabbing onto something, enhancing it, using their own stuff, pulling it out of open source, and then extinguishing to get rid of it. It's a process that they follow with software all over the world to destroy things that they don't like. Uh, in addition to that, you can look at the NSA keys. That's never been resolved. So Windows had a situation with the NSA keys. The NSA keys get leaked. Uh, and then a developer just recently leaked a whole bunch of hard-coded backdoors in Windows. And then they had to go in and make a bunch of changes. So I know that, in general, all computing sucks. If we could go back to anything, we'd go back to Commodore 64. That's what I want. Turn on the computer, use it, and if anything breaks, turn it off and flip it right back on, and we're up and running all over again. Like, that's, that would be my dream. If we could go back to anything, you give me Gopher, you give me BBSs, and you give me Commodore, and I'm, I'm, that's it. I'm gold. That's it. I don't need anything else. I'm happy. But it's never going to return to that. And with the tool set that we do have, essentially all of it sucks. Everything sucks, but Linux sucks the least, as far as I know. And I, I'm happy contributing to open source projects with other people who have generally the same ideas and thought process towards security, towards privacy, and trying to do the right thing. Are we doing the right thing? Who knows? I don't know. But that's what I like. I like Linux. I like the, uh, the attempt, putting in the attempt. That's why I'm up here talking at nearly 9 o'clock at night and that's why you all are in the, the audience, right? You had an opportunity to go home and do anything else, but you decided to spend it here learning about operating systems, learning about Linux, and learning about some of the tools that are being used. And for whatever reason, that's your reason, but undoubtedly, every single person here is connected through Linux. Every single one of us. I mean, it, what is it, the Phoenix Linux Users Group? So. Every single person here probably has the same thought process towards security, towards how people should treat each other, and so on and so forth. So it's as much a culture as it is an operating system. It's not just a tool. It's, it's, a, it's a way of life, as nerdy as that sounds. So that's why I like Linux. Anything else? No? Well, then... Took up two hours of your time. I want to tell you all thank you very much for coming out here. I appreciate you listening to me. And I hope in some small part that th maybe this helped you. I hope that it assists you in, in some way. And if there's ever anything that we can do for you here, please let us know. Happy to do it. So thank you all very much. And good night and drive home safe. Thank you.